I closed my eyes just for a minute. It's already November, the transitional month, most melancholic of all, when the lush golden beauty of October fades into bare and solemn stillness of the fast approaching winter. This time in between, a harsh transition into months of dormancy, both physical and mental too. There is something about this time, perhaps the inevitable fall of everything living into the quietest slumber which puts you into this extra thoughtful and melancholic mood. Or the rush and haste before the holiday season, year's end, the pressure to enjoy it because, well, that's what everyone seems to do at this time. One foot back in summer memories, another in a rush to complete all the things on to-do list before Christmas. Oh, I've been there too many times. In all honesty, I haven't been feeling my best these past few months. So, for that reason, I wanted to share a few things I like to do in autumn to make me feel better and help me find new appreciation for this season. They are in no way useful or productive things or make you instantly fall in love with autumn, but they are just simple little moments that perhaps may add a little moment of joy into an ordinary day. I go out a lot on walks in nature, which perhaps is the most obvious thing to do, but believe me, sometimes it's so hard to actually find strength and purpose in these walks. Whenever I go out, I treat it as a sort of meditative time or a little exercise away from the screens, from the familiar environment at home, from sounds coming out of the computer or any other distractions. I don't listen to anything, just observe or focus on the sounds that surround me. I find this experience very inspiring. To make these walks more interesting, I try to find some edible plants or something to forage for. Mushrooms are very abundant at this time of the year. I actually thought there weren't many mushrooms in England, but I was very much mistaken, as there are a lot. I'm not very knowledgeable though, so I stay away from picking them. There is a great book about mushrooms, which I am yet to read, and before I do, I will stay away from eating any forest fungi. There are many poisonous ones, or the ones that disguise themselves as edible. Without substantial knowledge, they might be a bit too dangerous to forage for. But I still find so much joy in simply searching for them and taking loads of pictures. Instead of mushrooms, though, I foraged for sweet chestnuts the other day. Do not confuse them with horse chestnuts. The edible ones are covered in needles on the outside and are almost impossible to handle with bare hands. Once you open them up, they are much smaller and have a distinct teardrop shape with a little fringe on one side. There are many sweet chestnut trees in England, but if you can't find a tree or they don't grow where you are, chestnuts are usually sold at supermarkets at this time of the year. The process of roasting and peeling them is quite tedious, but I like to believe that sometimes we should allocate time for things that are a bit different and slower than our routine. However tedious, it is something that you can only do seasonally, once a year, so I like to slow down and enjoy the process. This time I roasted them and ate them right away, but I will share some recipes in the future.
When I lived in a big city, I used to take a book and go out to a quiet cafe and simply people watch from my dimly lit corner. I haven't done this for a while now, but I think that would be a wonderful thing to do this November. At this time of the year, I like to read classics, gothic stories or darker, more thoughtful novels. I have recently finished reading Wuthering Heights and moved to The Portrait of Dorian Gray. I think these two books are perfect for this season. And when the rain stops, I'll be preparing my tiny garden for winter. I've already picked the last tomato crop and am very patiently waiting for cayenne peppers to blush. I will be planting flowers for spring very soon. Tulips, daffodils, crocuses and snowdrops. Come February, they will burst into most beautiful colors. All of my herbs I'll be bringing indoors, as I'm afraid they may not survive winter outside. I'm not the most knowledgeable gardener, but there is something so inspiring about nature and its cycles. Even if you don't have a garden, I encourage you to plant something on the balcony or on the windowsill and watch it grow this winter. When the nature outside is going to sleep, you will have a little bit of nature to tend to in your own home. I hope you are enjoying this season wherever you are. Whether you are enjoying the wonderful smells and colors, the sound of crunching leaves under your feet or the smell of warming spice permeating through your kitchen, soaking under the cool autumn rain or enjoying the unusually warm sunshine, of course, depending on where you live. I hope you are able to find little moments of joy and quiet at this time. Please let me know what your favorite autumn activities are and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.